If you're going to ghost hunt, please be respectful to, and ask for spirit's protection and have an open mind. Welcome back to The Rebellion. Today we'll be stepping out of our comfort zone and taking on the task of creating a documentary about paranormal investigations. We travelled up to Colchester to film in one of the most haunted hotels in Essex called the Brook Red Lion and we will be staying in a room there to film on overnight. Me and Shay will be the presenters of this project, however, there will be a few people joining us from behind the camera to help us investigate. Sydney will be our camera woman, so if she's not always in shot, she will be behind and she will be taking notes on the investigating. Mara will be our main editor and be with us along the journey. Now onto the main part of this documentary. We have arrived at the Brook Red Hotel, as you can see. This is our room. This is where we'll be staying in to film our overnight. Colchester was one of the oldest towns in Britain. It was the largest town in Essex throughout the entire Middle Ages and was initially the principal town of, of London. The Great Fire of London took out half of Colchester in 1666. So as Shay said before, we are in the Red Lion Hotel, which is one of the oldest hotels in all of Britain. It was built in the 1400s and has been through a lot of stuff as and I said before with the fire and so the reason why we're at this hotel is because three of the rooms have the most activity room five six and ten and ten is the most haunted and we are currently sitting on the bed inside of room ten I think most years someone somewhere in our congregation or someone I know um, will come to talk to me or one of our team in the parish about something that has happened to them uh, in one way or the other. So for example yesterday someone or two days ago someone was talking to me about when they saw an angel. Um, but from time to time someone will approach me and say something odd is happening in their house or they have seen something or they are scared by something that has that has taken place. So it doesn't happen all the time, but it's not infrequent. And I would say most years there is something somewhere that I will be in touch with. So one of the most prominent ghosts is called Alice Catherine Miller. She was said to be a chambermaid in like the early 1400s. Um, there are a lot of speculations into how she died. Some say that it was suicide, but others think not considering like the weight of the fall and how she fell and things like that. But um, one of the theories that she was murdered is that she had an affair with like a magistrate or someone who was like much, much older than her. And then he obviously had his way and then pushed her. Um, another one is that her husband or boyfriend was jealous and then did it. And then others are just, it was a mistake and she was just targeted. Alice Catherine Miller. She has been resident since 1632 when she was foully done, de done to death by her wealthy landowner and lover. Fearfully of, fearful of discovery, he fled to France. One of the managers that stayed here. So he said that he awoke to what felt like a surge of electricity going through his body. And when he obviously woke up startled, she was sitting in the corner and asked him, are you okay? When he replied yes, she slowly faded and left the rocking chair just rocking on its, on, on its own. As I said before, Alice is the most prominent ghost and has been seen and, and experienced and, and has actually interacted with guests. Along with Alice, as Sydney has said, there are two other more prominent ghosts. We have the hooded man or the hooded monk, as people have referred to him as. He is said to be walking through main reception and he spends most of his time there. He normally just strolls by, he's not looking to do anything, he kind of just gets on with his own like stuff. It was said that he died in a fire trying to protect one of the boys from his monastery. So the monk may not have died in the inn itself. He could have died in a fire that happened, a massive fire that destroyed most of Colchester 
and he might not have even been he might not have even been here he could have been in the priory that we went to which was actually reduced to ruins in all of the pictures that we've seen and everything and the shots we take was all completely destroyed another another prominent ghost would be the boy this is a small child that is seen running through the through the through the parliament room which is now the restaurant it's also known to appear in the back of people's photos so if there's like a wispy sort of childlike stature it's most likely the boy um it is said that he's not actually looking to hurt or to terrorize anyone he's just looking for a playmate which is why he normally appears more to children because he just wants to find a friend um have you spoken to any children or any like vulnerable kind of spirits um i've spoken to a lot of children um one place in particular that we go to used to be an orphanage um so we do get a lot of children there we've got a couple of schools that we go to um again that we get children from um i've had guests come along and they've had um like a child that's been related to them come through um so yeah, numerous different times I've had children come through, um, but they're always like the most painful. They always want to sort of interact. Um, they don't necessarily want to answer questions because obviously they think that's a bit boring for a child. Mm. But when it comes to all the equipment that we use, they always sort of find that interesting and fascinating and they want to play like different games and they'll make noises for us or let us hear them like running around. Um, less prominent ghosts that we literally found about not too long ago they were very very enclosed they weren't very sort of, they weren't talking about like at all um we found out about them watching another youtuber's documentary about their stay here in the same room i believe and um they told us about two witches that apparently there are apparently two witches that haunt room five yeah. that spend time in room five um because it used to be a courtroom here like the second floor was a courtroom yeah. and um it could have been where they were sentenced to death so obviously they have a whole they hold a grudge and this was where their lives practically ended another ghost which i find very not very <laughs> no not comforting as a woman <laughs> But there is apparently a man in room six yes. who spends his time luring women there. <laughs> He's strangling them to death. So he is a very violent ghost. He is a poltergeisty kind of vibe. And he he has been known to scratch and pull the hair of women and just terrorize them altogether. So if, if someone experiences a malevolent spirit or something like that, um, I think there are a number of things that can be done. Uh, first of all, it's good to speak to someone who's got some experience of it. And the first step they will take, be it a doctor or a vicar or whoever it is, will be to explore together whether actually there might be a very normal explanation for it. Um, and there can sometimes be normal explanations. Sometimes people might be disturbed by noises in the night. And if you make some inquiries, and I'm thinking in particular instance here, you discover, well, actually, the stairs next door, which they weren't aware of, go very near. And this was someone who was coming in in the middle of the night. And that's a particular experience I had. Um, it can be very appropriate to talk with a doctor because there can be psychological reasons for it and anxiety can cause all sorts of things so that can be another appropriate step okay um have you ever felt anything or been around anything that has frightened you or made you uncomfortable oh gosh yeah um when i first started with the team as a ghost hunter i was still quite uh i used to call myself a skeptical believer um but i was a very very scared skeptical believer um, and when we started doing one location in particular um, the night was very very active and I had um, a couple of objects thrown at me um, and we spoke to the spirit um, in question and he actually said that he didn't like me um, so that was, yeah I was very scared after that. 
very, very scared. I didn't sleep very well that night. <laughs> Now is the part where we kind of talk about like how we feel being in the room because obviously <clears throat> it's supposedly haunted. We spent a lot of time researching this and we've looked into it. It's basically just been a picture until now. Now we're actually here, we're sitting here and it's real. When I walked in, I felt <clears throat> fine. But as I got more and more up the stairs, the closer and closer I got to this room, I felt more and more uncomfortable, um, especially in the corner over there. <laughs> There is a chair and a door that I don't particularly like. For some reason, it makes me very uneasy. A lot. There's certain places, like the chair that's in the hallway that's across from room three, that kind of freaks me out. And the fact that the bathroom window kind of just opens upwards instead of down, it's just very easy to like get out of. And so it's just kind of certain points of it just kind of make you feel uneasy. But it's nothing like... I think there's going to be a paranormal anything. I feel like when we walked in, it's such a big building and it's so old that I think it's just, it's very, very beautiful, but there is something about it that might just be because it's old or the fact that there's something else here. Yeah. So, me, Shay and Sydney are all believers. We all believe in the paranormal and ghosts. However, Lauren... <gasps> skeptic. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm a step skeptic. It's because I think you only feel uncomfortable because of how old it is. I don't believe something is here. But I think, have you ever been to a church and you feel, oh. yeah. yeah. It's because you know some people are buried there, you know? I think it's because the fact that someone was killed here makes you change the way you feel about it. That's what I think. But, you know, you walk down the street, someone could have died there, but you would feel fine. Mm -hmm. But I think it's because you've done so much research on it. Yeah. You're like... So now we're going to go out, grab some food, and we're going to leave two of the cameras rolling to see if we can spot anything. So this is currently 11.30, we are currently back. Whilst we was out, two cameras are recording. One was recording this bed, the other one was in the chair, right over there. Um, we haven't looked at the footage yet, we will do, and hopefully maybe something mm -hmm. can be seen. Um, we just don't want to watch it yet, just in case, because we might sleep if, it, something, if something did happen, I will be going home. <laughs> Just saying. We're all going to sleep anyway. Um, hopefully. Hopefully. And we'll see you in the morning. Or in the post interviews. Or never if we don't survive. So we're back from the hotel. It was alright. Um, it could have gone worse, but it could have gone a lot better. It, oh, it was just... Relatively, while we was there, we didn't really see anything. No. It was mainly oh, wait. the cameras picking cameras, things yeah. up. Yeah. We didn't, there was nothing like nothing touched us. There were certain points where me and you thought something had like scratched our backs. Yeah, and Sydney thought that something touched her as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we never, we can't really pinpoint that down to a ghost. It could have just been anything to be fair. It could have just been our clothes as well. So, so we're going to go into what happened at 3 o'clock in the morning. Well, roughly. It was about half two when Hannah first woke up but at two o'clock in the morning I was feeling very uncomfortable I was in pain my stomach was literally going to explode but yeah and I think I was up and down every time you started speaking and like moving around and stuff so every time someone changed where they were sleeping or like spoke about something different I'd be like what <laughs> just because I was I was so aware of you two not being asleep that I was like must check on Shay and Hannah. Must check on Shay and Hannah. Make sure they're still alive. So I think that was why I kept waking up and why I was awake during this bit. But at the same time, there have been loads of noises. But the thing is, is that I thought they were coming from number nine, which we found out later on in the day. They didn't get in until five o'clock in the morning. So this was about two hours before they were even in there. Mm. 
because I kept so I kept going. I was like, oh, poor number nine, oh, <laughs> like, no. Jesus Christ. They go yeah, because I woke up at like five, and that was around about the point where I couldn't really get back to sleep. I think I fell asleep half an hour with, uh, past that with you. Mm-hmm. But I kept jolting awake before falling yeah. asleep. And that's when I moved to the chair. Yeah, and so there was like there was this like noise from the hallway and I went and checked it about half hour ago because I thought I heard someone cleaning and I thought it's 4 30 in the morning it's a bit weird time to be cleaning the floor mm-hmm. if I went and checked so and there was like no one there like I had looked around there was even a door out to like a roof and I had checked on there there was no one there and so around about like 5 a.m I start hearing like people talking and at this point I think Shay you might I think you were asleep at this point, but everyone else was asleep, and I was just kind of hearing talking noises as if someone was saying, like, oh, let's just get into the room, whatever. And so, in my head, at first I was like, it's a ghost, because, you know, we expected paranormal. Anything I hear, I assumed it was paranormal. But then the more, like, it got more distinctive and more close, like, it got closer as time went on, and so... I just kind of heard them like all enter their room, which was really weird at that point because I wasn't sure if I was dreaming or not. But these people that we had thought had been there all day, it turns out they wasn't there until 5.30 in the morning. So it was just kind of like a really weird situation to be in when no one was awake. And the thing is, I didn't check the hallway at, this, at that time. Because obviously 5 a.m. in the morning is not really a good time to kind of go out and check a hallway, especially if you think there's people there. <laughs> So I can't really say whether for certain it was people next door or if it was something else. At the same time, we have spoken to people that have experienced things. So although it didn't happen to us, it could have happened to other people. But from what, you know, from what we know, from what we experience, from what, from science, what we live through, the question, is there paranormal activity in the world, will still... And I think for a long time, be a mystery. Yeah. A mystery.